Okay, y'all wanted more stories about working with um, Nepo babies in Hollywood? <laughs> Here you go. So, by the way, this is um, this is me taking uh, kids from Harvard Westlake down the Colorado River. I guess uh, Jonah Hill's sister went to Harvard Westlake, but all these kids go to these same schools, right? Now, I'm not going to show any of their faces or drop any names because I they were children, and I just don't believe in doing that. But I will say that I was pleasantly surprised that some of these kids with very famous parents were actually um, seemed to be pretty humble and were actually even helpful and they were clever and they they were empathetic and all these things that I like wasn't sure if they would be uh, but there's a lot of them were absolutely not a lot of these kids live in such a bubble the Nepo bubble that they they think everyone is literally here to serve them okay so this is how we lived all right we no health insurance like zero benefit we're working with the richest children in America. <laughs> and all of us are living in our cars, right? So this setup right here is like, we slept outside all the time, partly because we're outdoorsy and we like to sleep outside, but like none of us paid rent anywhere because we couldn't afford rent. It's certainly not in LA. And we were on the road all the time. So this is how we lived, right? Which was hilarious when you were working with kids with hundreds of millions of dollars, right? And you're just like, yeah, I make $60 a day. <laughs> and pay California gas prices and California like cost of living prices. So I literally am living in my car. Now, because we all were mostly middle class or above, um, you know, and had college degrees, because you have to have a college degree to work for this company. You know, we were doing, um, you know, we were doing all kinds of jobs that required a lot of credentials. Like we were naturalists, right? So we're teaching them about astronomy, how to climb. Uh, we're teaching them, you know, just stuff about how to build their confidence. We are uh, group management. We are teaching them how to bond with each other because a lot of these kids didn't know each other. Um, conflict resolution sometimes. Usually it was just fun. We played a lot of games with these guys, like these kids. And the ages were all the way from like, you know, elementary school all the way through high school. But some of these kids, especially when they're in high school, like the freshman kids, they had the audacity to be like, and they'd be like, what, you're not going to make my sandwich for me? And I'm like, bitch, no. <laughs> of course I didn't say that, but I'm like, no, you make your own sandwich. Like some of them literally thought that we not only were their naturalist, their leader in charge of their first aid, in charge of keeping them alive. They also thought that we were like their little personal assistant and their cook and all of this stuff. Like they live on another planet. Like they're obsessed with Purell. You know, meanwhile, see this is a cube truck. They use this in the film industry too, but we also use this in our, outdi our outdi outdoor jobs. Look, I am literally sleeping on the tailgate of a cube truck. Headlamp, you know, sleeping bag, eaten alive by mosquitoes, but it was too hot inside of the cube truck because a lot of times we had to like, you know, <sighs> Someone had to guard the cube truck because the raccoons were always like, it, 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 I have so many crazy stories from this time. But these girls, which a lot of these teenagers, seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade girls would show up on a canoe trip. The heat index, like it's like 115 degrees. It's in the desert. It's Southern California on the border of Mexico. They'd show up in Uggs, Uggs on a canoe trip. Like your feet, you were wet all day. There's like, pools of water in your canoe because they always leak. They wore Uggs, they wore like their little trucker hats and their sunglasses. Like I remember thinking, I am so glad. Like I thought I grew up, because I grew up around rich kids. My mom and, and my dad, when they were still together, they heard of a new neighborhood that was popping up and they just took a chance and they wanted us to go to a good public school, right? Like I went to kids where all these kids got like a brand new car at 16. Like they lived in mansions, not all of them. But it was fascinating because I was like, I thought I, I grew up around rich. And obviously I have a lot of privilege, white privilege, middle-class privilege, I'm able-bodied, um, heterosexual, like all that stuff, right? And I always was like jealous of my friends because they just like, you know, I'm like my mom would make my clothes to look like they're from the limited. She made our one of our, our Cabbage Patch kids, like learn how to make dolls. So that, anyway, she did such a good job trying to help us fit in with all these really rich kids, right? When I worked with these children, when I worked at this is another place I would sleep. Like, I didn't, not even a tent. This is how I lived, y'all. When I worked with these children, it was the first time in my life I was like, oh my God, 
I know that their lives are a lot easier, like so much easier because of all of this privilege, but dear God, their parents hate them. Like their parents literally hate them. They, their, their parents hate them. Their parents hate them. I had one kid. Um, this was like a, up in the, in the Sierras. It was like a cabin based program. This kid claimed to have like altitude sickness. He was, you know, he, he was faking it. You know, I take this stuff very seriously, but I realized at a certain point I caught him being like looking around. And then as soon as he saw someone looking, he was like, oh, oh, All these kids, they just want to go home because they don't, they're so out of their comfort zone. His own parents wouldn't come get him. They sent their driver eight hours each way. That's 16 hours round trip by car um, to come pick this kid up in the emergency room. Like this kid played so hard. Like he was so committed to be. And then he actually had to take him off in an ambulance because I was like, are you sure? You know, the ambulance is going to take, and he was like, yeah, because he was so afraid to back down from his life. Can you imagine being in the emergency room? Like his parents didn't really realize he was faking it. And I think he kept faking it because he realized that there's no turning back at this point. Imagine being in the hospital and your parents won't even come. Imagine that. So this is how I lived in this oversized coffin that I cooked like a roasted chicken and <laughs> if I parked in the sun there's another kid um she's a her her mother is very famous very famous she also her mother also was very famous for having a serious addiction and this girl acted out on course in Joshua Tree now I was on her course I was on the course right next door at the other campsite but apparently they had to send her home and so they called her mom and her mom Famous mom shows up to Joshua Tree wasted and causes this huge scene. And then they can't send her off with her mom. So now they have this this girl who's being a little brat. And we had like literally being so difficult. She gets kicked off course. And now they have her drunk famous mom to have to deal with. Like it's almost like Hollywood is in general an extreme version of just whiteness in general like what and patriarchy and all capitalism and all these systems right because I know what it's like to, to grow up in in a white family that you're not allowed to have mo emotions you're not allowed to cry you're not allowed to like feel anything but I always knew my mom cared about me and loved me right especially based on all the sacrifices that she did for us but these house these these people in Hollywood I don't think they ever see their kids. They put a lot of pressure on their kids to, you know, don't make me look bad. But they're, they have multiple nannies who raise them all. They have siblings that are decades older than them. One of the girls, she was 15. And her sister, one of her sisters was like 55. I was like, oh my God, what, it's like, what is it like to have a sibling 40 years older than you? She was like, man, nah, I don't know. It's kind of like having another mom, I guess. I don't know, I, ever, I never see her. This 15 year old's father was 85, I think. She told me he's still, you know, youthful because he jumps on the trampoline with weights and stuff. But this man had had so many wives and he's one of the most famous old time directors in Hollywood. Did one of the most epic films of all time and was still having children in his 70s. Kind of like, you know, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. Don't get me started on them. Like Hollywood is like a microcosm of everything wrong with the United States. <laughs> but like on acid. And it really took me working with the most extreme version of rich people because they're rich and famous to realize that like, as much as I would, I was always jealous of rich people. That was the one time I was like, I don't really know if I'm jealous of them anymore. <laughs> like I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to not be a human being because that is how they, a lot of them are raised, which is why so many of them are messed up and they're not like Jonah Hill. Act, like they just continue the cycle of violence. And there are also so many predators in Hollywood that if you get out of Hollywood unscathed by a perverted old man, consider yourself lucky because they're everywhere.